Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean. And as you can see, I got a special guest. Once again, this is Russ. Yo, yo. Russ. Russ is currently GM at The Rap Fest. If you don't know about The Rap Fest, you can check them out at The Rap Fest on IG. Um, but I'm going to let Russ elaborate on that. But he got a lot of other things going on. I'm uh, working on a record label. So many things. We'll get into all that stuff. But how would you define yourself? How, how do you pitch yourself to people? Because I know you got a lot of things moving in the pot, man. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's hard to, like, pin one title. But, you know, uh, marketing and uh, uh, PR, I went to school for PR. So, you know, um, all of these things combined, you know, my, my brother's a producer. I, I, I helped build his craft, you know, since he was 13. So that's where the A&R really comes into place. And then, you know, I work with different artists on the management level. So, you, you know, know, kind of, know. Kind of, yeah, um, one of the artists, Aaron Knight, you know, he's from Queens. He's been on tour, Rich the Kid, Young M.A. He's got a record called uh, Side Nigga that's, that's done pretty well on the stream and on the YouTube side. Yeah, but, um, and then I got a, an, another artist in Brooklyn, Why Him? He's more still in the development phases, but, um, you know, make it, making a bit of noise on a, on a local level. So, yeah, man, just between all these moving pieces, um, Rap Fest, you know, um, that that's a project that was launched in 14, 2014, and I actually came on board as just an intern, wow. um, stayed real close with the founder. And three years later, you know, he, he's kind of like a serial entrepreneur. So he, he just, once he felt like it had reached a certain point, he was ready to just move on to the next project he was passionate about. And he just kind of gave me the keys and said, stay the ship. So, um, yeah, Rap Fest, um, Island Records, where I'm doing marketing and brand partnerships. And then just working with artists on a, on a personal level, whether it's a and press, kind of just all of the, all of the, the above, which would be like kind of like a, a product manager type of role. So, yeah, man. Okay, okay. So let's let's start with the rap fest real quick, and then we'll move into all these other pieces because I'm, I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you, man. Okay. Um, with the rap fest, you start off as an intern doing what? Marketing, digital marketing. So really, my job was to grow the brand. We started at zero. The Twitter was at zero. The Instagram was at zero. <laughs> you know, like, and I'm I'm in the dorm room just trying to figure out, okay, what, what do we do here? So um, and now y'all are at what? Just to get a people an idea. Okay, the the Instagram is at sixty k. Um, you know, um, the Twitter is at forty k, but the Twitter actually. We we had posted. I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks back when Kendrick was on uh, uh, Power. We we had we had posted that clip and stars yeah. came after us. And uh, our, our, yeah, our Twitter has been uh, what you might call um, banned or something or banned. banned. Yeah, yeah. yeah, momentarily though. Yeah, momentarily, we we've been. I've been you know writing every last person in the Twitter offices. Trying to figure out, you know, what 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 can we do? So, yeah, um, that's what you know. Started as an intern, and then um, you know, we we just like started kind of tapping on other hip hop pages, doing little shout out for shout outs, you know, building relationships with artists. By summer of 2015, we was doing showcases. We did this one showcase I'll never forget. It was the first one we ever did. Um, we had Tax Stone, you know, free him. We had him hosted. Um, and it was just like a real kind of New York City, local star studded kind of event. Like we had like 40 ounce band pull up, um, artist Nitty Scott, who who's still kind of, she never really broke through. She's just kind of like a New York hometown hero. Um, Yo, I'll be getting confused, man. I'll be hearing New York people say Nitty. I'll be thinking they talk about Nitty Beats, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the Atlanta, you man. Nitty yeah. Beats. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we had like Nitty Scott pull up, 40 ounce pulled up, Tax hosted it. Who else? But Manolo Rose, he he's, he never broke through neither. But um, yeah, it was just a cool night. And from that, and from that point on, we was just kind of like getting a, a nice reputation in the New York tri-state kind of area. Okay. And actually that summer, summer 2015, I got my first internship at a label. 
um, and I did marketing at Def Jam. So at, that's when I started doing the juggle thing and I had Def Jam and I had Rap Fest. And um, yeah, from that point, I was just kind of all in on the, on the music, hip hop, dope type of vibe, you know? So I know a lot of artists probably are going to watch this. How do y'all get artists on the rap fest? Like, what do y'all look for? Do y'all even mess with up and coming artists too much? Oh, absolutely. We, we, I, I wanted to position us as like the the blog in particular that's for the up and coming artists. You know, I, I, I steer my my writing staff of journalists to like, you know, I, I obviously we have to talk about the mainstream stuff with the Kendricks and Coles and and Drake's right, right, right. but but I want to be the place where you a, a tastemaker publication you know that's that's really where where i want to be so as far as up and coming artists absolutely you know that's that's where we um that's that's probably our signature right there just kind of supporting um the up and coming acts and the acts that really can't get press anywhere else you know we want to be the the first co-sign but but obviously you know the shit got to be dope you know the shit got to be you know we had a submission or what yeah 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 um you know, like like any other publication, find one of our writers, whether it's on the site, and shoot him an email. You know, and if he thinks it's dope, they'll they'll they you know what I'm saying? Give it a nice you little write up. Work people don't they, they don't they don't. That, that's them. really it, man. You know, you you and I, I know the same, man. The information is out there. There's guys like you, you know. There's guys that's giving the information all day and night. And it really comes down to the artists really just wanting it for themselves. You know, yeah. how many artists do you know really that, that got an Excel spreadsheet? They going on every blog, they writing down the writers, they going to the Twitter, they going, they seeing that the email is in the Twitter bio, they putting the email next to the first name, next to the blog, yeah. in the Excel sheet. No, nobody really doing the work. So Hey man, yeah. you gotta do that. I don't care who you are. I'm shoot, I do that kind of stuff, man. I got a list of yeah. Uh, that within the music industry, I got that within tech industry, man. I, wherever right. I'm sick, man, I'm I'm gonna get some numbers and names just to give me an idea of who's who. That's and, it, and, and you, you got to do that. Um, so how about That's this? It. We already know that artists can reach out and get to your writers. What's been one of the more interesting things that's happened with the publication, other than the Kendrick situation? What's been one of your favorite things as far as how y'all contributed to the culture? Uh, the showcases is dope. Um, we we did we even did producer showcases, which I thought was probably even more dope than the artist showcase. Y'all still doing that? Um, we fell off of that, but I am adamant about getting back onto it because okay. I just felt like there was such a huge opportunity there. So we actually had a showcase um, where the winner got to to work with Davies. You know, we set them up in the studio. With, with a session with Dave East, play beats for him right there close in person and stuff like that. So um, that was just awesome, you know, being able to have producers all in the room. There's nothing more hip hop than a producer showcase. You know, I feel like yeah. you have to really love hip hop to be sitting around in a room full of people listening to beats. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. that's real. So, that's so real, that, that was, I, that I'll probably even give a nudge up above the artist showcase. Cause that the artist showcase, even though it was dope, it was still kind of a mingle event. There was, there was popular people in the room, so it's like you know, it's 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 easy to show love for that. But the producer showcase, when people came out for that, that was more like wow, like people right. are really supporting on a very hip hop level. You know gotcha. what I mean? And what are you doing at Island Records right now, by the way? Marketing, brand promotion. So. Um, the marketing is really just assisting three project uh, product managers um, and then the brand promotion, uh, the, the brand partnerships. I'm sorry. That's like connecting artists with a brand. So Island, we're actually going through a transition. Um, you know, relatively, we've been known for like, well, obviously, we've been known in the past for being tied with Def Jam. Then they split. Um, and really, since the split, we've been more of a pop label doing Demi and Nick Jonas, acts like that. But in the last five months, we have a new president, we have a new um, a GM, and they're both black. So um, mm. to say the least, we've, we've, been, we've been doing a hard left towards the urban side, and we've been making a mm. lot of signings and, and things of that nature um, to really go hard in the urban space. Because as, as we both know, hip hop 
that runs the world right now. So, For sure. we, it, you know, pop it. Pop ain't even pop no more. Hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, man. I, I knew that was bound to happen to pop, man. Because, like, when pop started off, it literally just was popular music. But then right, you right. trying to use that formula and made pop have its own sound. And that right. sound was, like, kind of corny. It's kind of hard to resonate with. It, like, if you want to come up in culture for pop, you literally have to have a record label, like, injection. There's no culture. Absolutely. You can't independently grind your way up through pop. Nah, you know, nah, nah, nah. I always tell people, you have to... No, I don't think anybody really does that, neither. If you look at, like, any act, like, even, like, a Taylor Swift, she was country. Yep. Became the 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 person to listen to in country music, and then that became pop music. Where you look at Drake, same thing on the urban side. He became the number one in our world, yep. and then he branched off into the larger world. You know, so yep. you know, I don't think you could just break out in pop music. You have to have like, or, or look at uh somebody else who's on Island, Sean Paul. You know, he was in the the reggae space. For real. And crossed over, you know. What about the, um, somebody like Selena Gomez, people like that. Like you could be a little Disney star, Disney star, the child music, yeah, and then branch off into the pop, yeah. you know. But it, it always it always stems from somewhere. Yeah, Bieber uh, had a machine you know, behind you for sure. Right, right. Okay. Well, so who are well? I don't want to get in too deep into who y'all signed before, but what kind of artists are y'all looking for right now? If I'm trying to get signed to Island Records because I heard. From a little birdie that they looking at hip hop artists all of a sudden, like what what kind of artists would fit y'all's bill? We really don't have a, a urban space identity, so I w- I wouldn't even say there's a particular frame that we looking for. If the shit dope and you know the following is there, that that's the thing. The label's only gonna knock on your door when you at the point where you probably don't even want to deal with a label anymore, you know. And I think that's the hardest pill for artists to swallow um they out here knocking on the labels doors and the labels those are the last people it's it's, it's, it's like a girl you know the girl don't want to deal with somebody who's texting them all day they want to deal with the guy that don't like them for real it's, yeah. it's the same thing with with the music you know these guys that's like trying to get a deal and spending their whole day trying to contact somebody at a label those days is over you know in the 90s sure you know knock yourself out but today you're wasting your time you can do it yourself. They, they yeah, better off watching your channel. They better off watching your channel, getting the knowledge, watching a hundred YouTube channels, and, and figuring out how to build their own team, their own little small label infrastructure, yeah. and going about it like that. Like that's that's the way to go. That's real. Okay. Because because if you don't have the clout, the labels are only gonna sign you and probably shelf you anyway. They, they, they're not gonna put like some huge budget. Artists get signed. Yeah, right. if if you don't have the clout, yeah, if you don't have the clout and it's not a sense of urgency to put you out, you're gonna get signed and you're still gonna. Now you're gonna have to compete with with the Demi Lovatos and the Nick Jonas's of the world. So it's like, what's the point when you could just build your demand, get a deal then? And and now the labels feel obligated to put money behind you and, and get the ship rocking fast, you know? Yep. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. I've um I mean I've spoken to some artists who've had some of those similar situations, man. It's like you when oftentimes if you're about to get signed, you know, or you know somebody who who um who wants to possibly sign you or they say they want to work with you or they kind of discovered you, they already have a name, but they kind of going back and forth, or if you're signed already. The best right. way to put some urgency in them is is get popping, get popping, get popping. Get poppin'. You know they were like, oh, oh, well, you know, let me hurry up and lock this person down before somebody else get them. Right. I know artists. I know. I know artists that get deals and sit on their ass and then lose the deal six months later, and their life hasn't changed one bit. And when, when in reality, what they should have did was get the deal and act like they ain't get the deal, and yeah. and still been working themselves, creating the urgency in the label. Cause now you signed, so they have. To, if they see you making these moves without their help, now they're like, okay, let let's put our foot on the gas. But but if if they looking at you, they they start to think, okay, maybe we made a mistake here. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. nothing to drop you. 
Nah, it'll drop you in a heartbeat, man. Yeah. In my three years being, you know, with Universal, I've, I've spent time at Def Jam, Capital, Republic, and Alamo Records. I even spent time at, and then now um, Island. I've seen a lot of artists get signed that you've never heard of, that you'll never hear of probably, you know? And it's like, they got a deal. And at the time I'm thinking, wow, this is about to take off. And then like three years later, I'll think, whatever happened to that guy? Man. <laughs> you know, it's if, 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 if I got 10 fingers, I have to say seven of the acts that get signed are like that. And then three of them end up becoming somebody. Three of them. Three of them. Out of the unknown, you know, I've never heard of you until you came up here and got signed. Probably seven of them. I, I just think, think of randomly years later, like, man, that never popped off. <laughs> and then three right. of them. Right. And it was three. And then it's three that actually find their way, you know, to everybody's home. Mm. You know. Wow. So why do you feel like that is, man? Give me a give just a little bit of more insight of how the labels think, how you guys think on the business side, and and what the disconnect is between the artist and the business person. Well, it'll be an artist that don't got any clout. And they'll get signed because they have some sort of connection with somebody or something like that. But that doesn't work a lot. That, 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 that more times than not, that does not work. That's why the labels just want to sign you after they feel like you figured it out on your own. Because yeah. now once we sign you, we ain't going to mess it up. You get what I'm saying? If a label signs you, they're not going to mess it up. So, so if you already have the ship rolling, you already making money, selling merch, doing shows, all of these things, the label's only going to put money to make it bigger. But if they have to create the, the, the ship itself, that's so, that, that doesn't work out that much. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Like I said, three out of ten times, yeah, it'll work out. They not Seven doing it like that no more, though. Right. No. Nah. It's not. No. Nah. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit, man. Um, I'm an artist. I'm at ground zero. Where do you invest the money in marketing first? Um, Instagram. Instagram, I would say. I'll tell you why. Um, the money is really in Spotify and YouTube, but how do you get people there? Instagram. You know, Instagram is to me just the channel that bring that you could bring people to your money making channels. Um and and that's the platform right now. That's where it's at. You know, that's where everybody's at. There's nobody not there. You know, everybody's there. Um, all the influencers, that's where they're most accessible, most willing to work, most willing to do some sort of promo or something like that. So um, Instagram, I would say. I mean, Facebook's cool too, but mm, not really. Like, yeah, not really. Yeah, if Instagram is where you want to build. If you could get a hundred thousand on, on followers with with actual engagement, real followers, not not some other shit. If you could get real, like organic, you know, nice, even twenty, thirty thousand followers, that's gonna trickle down to your streams. As long as you're consistently, you know, keeping everybody engaged, posting on a regular, doing what you have to do, that's gonna get your songs on Spotify and YouTube a decent amount of streams. You know. Especially if like, um, you know, they're, they're, they're following you for music and they're not following you because you're like doing, you know, and entertaining and, you know, yeah. that type of stuff, you know, you're, you're making yourself look crazy. But if you're up there, you know, you're looking like an artist, being an artist, promoting music and people are clicking like because of the music then you know you'll you'll have an easy time transitioning those people from one platform into a more music driven platform you know that 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 wouldn't that wouldn't be hard now if people aren't into you for the music and they're into you because you know um first trap or something might be a track or or yeah you you know you acting like bunk then that's when you're gonna have a tough time because they're not really following you for that they're following you because you you looking crazy you know so but but again, there's there's success stories with that. You got Cardi B. You got you got people that you know make make the transition and they shift the people from okay, I was doing this and now I'm doing that. So yeah, you man. know Instagram. I mean, 
to that, man, I always say, for me, the formula is simple. Like, you can get known for something else, but if you don't out overcome that, like the, the right. way to overcome that is simply making something that's better than what they already know you for. Like Cardi mm-hmm. was dropping music for a minute and it wasn't right. the worst music I would hear, you know, and I saw she was in the videos with a few of those people in New York, you know, moving around and all that stuff. Right. When that Bodak Yellow dropped, like that was that was that song. Right, right. You know what she did? What she, yeah, what she did, she really just gathered a community of supporters. Yep. And then um, you know, with the music, it just came to a point where everybody just needed a record that was good enough. Yep. Everything that she was dropping, it was just not good enough. And it then Bodak, right, Bodak Yellow was just like, ah, she got it. Yep. We on deck. There it is. And <laughs> we want to support you, but we yeah, yeah. You're not. And that's what right. people got to get real with themselves. Of. They think, oh, these people don't necessarily, just because they know me for this or blah, like, the song, like music, just might not be good enough. And the same right. way you got some homies, you know, you got some homies that know you because they're your homies, but they're yeah. not playing your song consistently. They might play that verse because, you know, they're oh, yeah. going to check it out. But is it in their actual playlist? You know what I mean? Right. And that's, that's how you know. That's how you really know. If, you, if your homies ain't only listening when you're asking them to, then that tell, that's enough data right there. You know, that's all the data you need. But a lot of people don't want to confront that data. You know, a lot of people are, are not into looking at that type of data. You know, they want to. <laughs> yeah. That's the different curse about, you know, music, man, and art, man, because it's subjective. So it's like, in one end, you can find some people who rock with what you got going on. But on another end, right. it prevents people when nobody is accepting it. They just tell themselves, oh, man, they're sleeping on me. When it's right, like, right. So, you know, it, it keeps you from facing. The yeah, because it's a, you know, at the end of the day, it's subjective. But yeah, man, yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think it's 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 yeah, it's a double edged sword because this era, everything is so accessible and you could do it on your own. But now it made people lazy. It made people feel like um, I'd rather just watch artists that I don't think is that dope get on, and then you know, say hip hop sucks because they got on. You know, like and it's like nah, it's not about it's not about what you're into. You know, it, we live in an era now where there's almost an audience for anything because it, it's the internet. It, you can find the people, you know? So it's no longer like the 90s where there's these eight rappers and everybody just has to listen to these guys. It's now an era where if you just like raps about cars, there's probably a rapper out there for you. And he could probably sell out a show full of kids that just want to hear raps about cars. Yeah, and you know? deal with NASCAR or something. Like, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like that's the era we in. You don't have to be mainstream. That's not the end all anymore. Yeah, for real, man. I mean, I just got off a dude, uh, call with a dude who um, did a song for little kids about being bullied, right? Mm. And from that, he got an entire school tour. Like people just like and he's from Canada. They start they pulled him to America to tour all on that kind of, like that subject matter. Like he had yep. a weird, interesting niche where you can like you can niche out anything, man. These days, of course, you might have to figure out how to flip it and flip it again so you can get bigger and bigger because some niches right. are pretty small and you might have a lot of ambition. But like, like look at somebody like. Um... Like XXX, you know, yeah. rest in peace. In the 90s, if I were to say, yo, there's a rapper that just raps like real depressed rhymes and real dark rhymes, you'd be like, who would listen to that? Yeah. But in today's culture, it's like, yeah, there's there's hundreds and thousands and millions of kids that just want to hear, you know, more depressing, dark music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they, it's, it's, they're out there. And yep. now with the internet, you can find them, you can access them, and, um, you know, just gear, gear yourself towards them. My favorite rapper is Dom Kennedy. You know, he hasn't had a, a platinum single. He hasn't had nothing, nothing on a mainstream level that would say, like, and, and, and Nipsey is another one of my favorites, yeah. who also just signed to Atlantic about a year ago. So it's like, yep. after you guys are already winning. Yeah, after years of winning, just kicking very niche, entrepreneurial, um, you know, gangster-turned-businessman raps. 
It was it was had nothing to do with a trap beat and you know a singy songy hook and anything that's deemed mainstream today. You know they do what they like to do, and there's an audience for it. Dom Kennedy just makes L.A. music. His music is never gonna sound like anything but L.A. ever. And and you would think, and in the in the label mind, you think, oh, how, that's not gonna sell. That's not gonna whatever. But it don't need to. Look at the streaming numbers. It don't need to. Man, he was so different for a good minute too. Yeah. Like I remember back in the day, I heard he got in the Best Buy without a label and stuff like that. I was like, how do you how do you manage to do that? <laughs> like, and, and his fan, and, and, and think about it, his fans is a guy like me that work at a label because that's what I admire. Yeah. I, don't, I don't admire the guy that goes the regular, you know, signs his life away and becomes a star. I like the guy who's like, nah, fuck that. You know, I'm just, I'm on my own. I'm going to do my own thing. You yeah. know, that's, that's what I appreciate. That's what's up, man. I mean, I know you got your hands in a lot of different things, man. Is this something else that you know, that you do that I don't even know about or? Um, man, like, I would say that's really it, man. I don't really... I rap when I'm drunk, but that, that's about it. Man. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm better than any rapper, man. When I'm drunk, word oh, too. I, I, <laughs> you gotta do some sh- shots right quick, man. Bust the freestyle. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, man. Like, um, give me this then. Um, I know you mess with producers and rappers, right? Your brother's a producer, right? Like, how do you move producers throughout the game differently than rappers? Mm, I would say like the producer game is totally different. And and I think, um, you know, going into like how you say, you know, I watch you, how you say like the 2020 vision. I think I was telling my brother the other day, I'm like, man, I think um, Khaled drama with like, um, you know, the mustards and the metros of the world, I think, the 2020s is going to be like the crossroad between those type of figures, like a DJ drama, a DJ Khaled, and a Metro, and a Mustard, and, and stuff like that. I think there's going to be like figures, producers that like make albums, just like they're an artist. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think like how Khaled and, and drama are kind of standalones, I think that'll be like a norm in the next decade. You know, a producer putting out an album, because that's where the money is there, you know? You you getting a cut of an artist's money, that's that's that is what it is. But to to put out your own album, that's where you could really see you know the real yeah. revenue. I mean, I like that man because it makes sense to me. For me, I've been thinking about this for a good minute. Like to me, hip hop is in behind in that sense. It's been ahead and it innovates in so many different ways. Even though the young kids today like this for some reason shit on hip hop culture and feel like. Right. Those that ate themselves with other stuff to feel elevated, but right. like hip hop innovates. But when you talk about the producer, like that's all that EDM stuff. Right. They they've been having projects and then featuring artists for years. And like I remember, it, I discovered this uh, producer David Guetta back in like oh nine ten or something like right. this. Right. Right. And then I thought. Because uh, I remember my brother was playing it. I'm like, yo, this is the dopest song or whatever. I'm like, this dude can sing his ass off. Yeah. And I clicked on one of his other songs. I'm like, yo, bro, his uh, David voice sound totally different on this song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I clicked on a different <laughs> song. I'm like, bro, it ain't even no man on this song. What the hell? And I found out he the producer. <laughs> and then I just fell through this whole, you know, whole like Euro music and all that stuff. Yeah. But, like, they've been doing that for a minute. And, them, and you obviously see them dudes are. Like, Killing the game like all Calvin that. Harris too. Calvin Harris another one. Like yeah, it's like DJ slash producers. Like what? Are, what do you really actually call them? Yeah, that's been killing the game. Hip hop is definitely they. And it's time for them to get into that. And and one thing I tell producers, man, like a lot of producers nowadays are beat makers. Um, we need more producers. We need producers. Actual producers producers yep. who know you know producers used to play the beat and then have a hook to go with it. Now, if, if the if the rapper don't like the hook, the rapper don't like the hook, but I'm going to pitch the hook. 
You know, when, when Kanye played Lucifer for Jay, he said, I got to get my soul right, uh, you know, and then Jay started saying, oh, okay, I, I could kill this. I see what I could do here. So yeah. it's like, you know, like I seen um, somebody tweeted, you know, producers got to be salesmen today. Like, and, and it's always been like that. The great producers, the, the great producers will play a beat. You know, they, there's always that meme of uh, uh, that gift, rather, of Timbaland, you know, doing with Jay-Z doing a, you know, like, and, and that's really how it is. You play a beat. For somebody like Jay-Z, you have to sell the beat. You have to, like, kind of steer the ship and let them know, okay, this is this type of vibe. This is what I hear on that. A lot yeah. of producers today are, like, emailing beats and, you know, whatever. Yeah, and it's that's just like... That's legit, man. That, that's legit, not a producer. I don't like to get on people too much for it, but like, if you want to be old school about it, yeah, straight up. What you're saying as a producer, you look at Quincy Jones, like the level of goat this dude is, and the, like, yeah, if you don't know who Quincy Jones is, man. Y'all gotta look that man up. Every the areas he took in culture, from Michael Jackson to Fresh Prince and different, like all that stuff. Like, man, like this people like that, you have to have a vision. And then yeah. really producing it, bring them together. Like if you if you're a movie producer, you're just the people who bring the people together. You see the pieces, you put them together. And you right, know, you got to be a salesman for that because you got to convince these people of this greater vision that nah, bro, it's gonna work. I, nah, I don't see myself on the song with him, but bro, it's gonna right. work. Trust me. And then of course you yeah. gotta win a little bit. Then they're gonna be like, okay, they can trust you. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake, how it was like, oh man, I'm gonna trust Kanye with my track. He probably shouldn't have trust him to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> or even like um even like what was i about to say even like um the classic story of puff and big you know big thought big big thought um unbelievable was this joint yeah big if you ask big he thought unbelievable was the single that is it right there yeah and puff just had a bigger and better plan yep. and at first biggie thought it was corny Two years yeah. later, all it is is Versace this, Lennon that. You know, he turned into the playboy. He turned into the player. Yep. So yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, you have to be able to sell the vision to the artist, to, to the management, to the label, whoever. You know, Kanye went around to every label and publication playing uh, college dropout. You know, and 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 you know, you know, you see how he is now. He was like that then. You know, he he would tell you the video's gonna be like this, and da da da, and I'm, I'm gonna add a quiet here, and he would sell it, and people would buy it. <laughs> people yeah. would buy it. So, yeah, all the greats, man. They, I think, certain things from the past um, aren't aren't exactly old school. They just been lost because there's an easier way, but the easier way isn't always the way. You know, yeah. sometimes people had it right the initial way, you know, and, and yeah. that's one of them things where, like, for producers, email, uh, it, it depreciates you a bit. Hey, that's real, man. I mean, at the end of the day, the top of the top, they still got those fundamentals. It's just like basketball. Right. Sports. You, know, you, yeah. you can get fancy with it, but, you know, you, the, the best ones still got them fundamentals at the same time. Yeah, you still got to put the ball in the hoop. It's still the same game. <laughs> still the same game. Yeah, I think I got to start pushing that a lot more I'm making a point of it in these streets. But, like, that will be the new era, like, of, of producers who, like, it, there, there has to be an uprising of legit producers again. I think it's yeah. – because it only makes sense in this era, right, if you think about the fact that, people are just playing albums and they picking the best song out of it anyway. So what's the difference for, from me That's, having an album of five songs, all these different artists, they just gonna pick the single they want anyway. Yeah, but that's another thing. Um, that's another thing that, you know, streaming kind of made like artists feel like, man, why, why would I make an album if I could just put singles out? But in reality, for certain type of artists, an album is the only way to communicate greatness. Yes. You know, like, that. it's really the only way. Like, sure, nothing but a G thing would have been cool living on its own, but it was the entire Chronic album that made Dre Dre. It 
wasn't any particular song, you know, and same thing with Kanye, same thing with Puff. These were albums that created these legacies. All them singles were just pieces of a larger picture, yeah. you know? There's no way that you can paint your story and get people to fully, fully invest. In one song. And who you are, yeah, if it's just one song. You gotta, no matter how good. You got to, like, to make them feel invested, it is my background, it is where I'm from, like, good kid, mad city, right? Like, you got to you gotta bring them into a world, and one song is not one world, no matter how good the song is. I wasn't, I, I thought Kendrick was great. I thought he was really good. I thought he was really good and nothing better than really good. And I had a close friend of mine that from 2010 to 2012 was telling me, yo, this kid is GOAT level. And I was just like, GOAT level, you pushing it. You know, he's decent, though. He's really good. I like him. He's good. But when Good Kid Mad City came out, I texted him and apologized real <laughs> quick. <laughs> and I said, yo, I see it. My fault. It's all there. Section 80 didn't quite do this for me, you know? And, and, and the other one before that, I can't think of the name. That makes but sense yeah. on Section 80, because he still sounded like Wayne and Jay-Z on different yeah, songs. Yeah, it was like, this is good. I definitely see that he's really good. But yeah. GOAT level, eh. Yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> I just <laughs> I <just laughs> that apology. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, it was the art of peer pressure that really made me realize I was like four songs in. I was like, all right, yeah, this dude is different. This dude got it. This dude is different. <laughs> all right. Hey, well, um, cause I know we could go on on actual just straight up hip hop for a, a good minute, man. But when it comes back to you, man, and what you do, um, I want to really leave them with something valuable in terms of what you got going on, or where where do you feel like artists in terms of where they could connect with the platforms like Rap Fest? I know you said they could reach out to um some writers do their research uh, is there anything else like that y'all have going on like maybe coming up another event that some artists that might um, might yeah, be we, we're, we're trying to for 2019 we want to kick back the um get back into the artist showcases producer showcases we, we even want to dive on like other shit like fashion shows we really want to be like a cultural um you know just just a pivotal cultural platform so um, you know, we, we started in 2014, so we a lot younger than on like a lot of platforms, you know, the only other platforms that like are, are really young that are really known is like Lyrical Lemonade, No Jumper. So like, um, yeah, we're, we're just, you know, we're starting a podcast. We, we got one podcast that we're, we're probably going to do a deal with soon um and stuff like that but as, as far as artists man you could reach out to any of the writers you could reach out to me you know russell at the ratfest.com um and you know i'm i'm receptive you know I, I'm, I'm pretty tied up i won't lie um i'll probably forward it to a writer but um man, bro, you're not yeah, gonna we, listen to my track when i send it up <laughs> <laughs> we i might not i'm gonna keep it 100 i might not but somebody will i can guarantee that <laughs> somebody will you know somebody absolutely will and um we're, we're accessible man we're not sure. we're not at the point yet where it's like some some difficult task to get on the site you know if, if the, the difficult part is for the artist to be dope you know if the artist is cool they got a, a solid video or even a solid record nice artwork nice mixing on the record solid verses and a hook you know um we'll we'll, we'll take it home hey man artists that's what you want to get on man you want to get on in these publications before they get big so you had a relationship that they build up you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. A, lot, a lot of people would like, you know, email Complex all day and night. And it's like, maybe switch the strategy up, man. Switch the strategy. Yeah. If it's not working, try something else. Hey, you might be able to get on Rap Fest, build your audience, and then get signed out Island Records. <laughs> yeah, you never know, man. You, not, you never know, man. But bet, man. Um, all right, you already told them where they can get you on the terms of the email. You said Russell at the rapfest.com. You want to give your social media out to them or anything? Yeah, at RustB1334 on Twitter and Instagram. Bet, bet. Feel free, you know, shoot a DM or whatever. We can we can chop it up. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I give the game for free, but like like you and I both know, man, a lot of artists they they um 
they they're looking for a fast route, man. They're looking for some sort of quick come up. And unfortunately, the the game has gotten a lot more accessible, but it, it's it's you still got to do the work. Oh yeah, work is it's getting up. people lazy, bro. It's some. It's, yeah. bro, it's gonna be somebody in the comments talking about. Yo, man, what's his, what's his Instagram? What's his Instagram? What's his email? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a guarantee. Hey, that shit never That's fails, a guarantee, man. man. But, bet, man, appreciate you once again. Yo, everybody, as always, if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.